How's your husband? Is he still doing the wrong thing now? Good morning, good morning. There you go. to the last 25 and the guys for 15 years and now we have all the new guys who are those that have never been here before that's so great Because we started with 21 acres on the hill in about 1957. Mm -hmm. And we slowly picked up pieces of land because it wasn't so expensive then, of course. Yeah. And so now we come down, we have that hill, we have the flat land, we have the 45 acres, we have the stallion over there, we go back to the top of the hill, we go to the top of this hill over here. Wow. And so we kind of encompass this whole little valley, which is unique now to this area because nobody has a little piece like this. So we're taking really good care of it, trying to be sure that it'll be taken care of forever. But in the meantime, we have this wonderful Diamond Jubilee, and we have been preparing. I have not been preparing so much. Angela, <coughs> who has body to a stub. <laughs> so, but we have a lot of people to mention this morning before we get started just because they will be the people you see. You've got the lovely program. Mm -hmm. Nikki Salazar uh, designed and put that together. in this clock barn. And these people have been with us a long time. And I think what's really important and that you are going to see in the next day and a half is that there is a definite correlation in how our horses work and handle. And it's because it's from the ground up on how we want them treated, handled, taken care of, and when you purchase a horse here, what you get is not a horse just out of a field. You get a horse that has been raised since it was a baby, allowing it to be in large fields so it knew how to be a horse, but also to have great trust in people, and not just because we've petted them, but because we've taught them. So when you get a horse from us, you're going to get a horse that A, <clears throat> believes you're going to be trying to tell it something, and if it can't quite understand what you're saying, it's going to try hard. Mm -hmm. We can teach you some of the basic it, uh, things that you're going to learn, and you'll see it as we ride today or work today. Uh, we will have our boutique over here that you'll all enjoy. The sales area, Angela will cover. And if you have any horses that you're seriously interested, please do not be shy to request because without you purchasing these horses, we can't do this, obviously. This ranch lives on the money that it earns from the horses. It does not have other money. It has never had other money. We have always managed to make our own. because we have learned how to do everything. <laughs> we do everything. 
So uh, don't be shy to ask Angela about horses to see. We will, after I get through my little activity here, then we will present horses that we are offering for sale and I'm definitely offering some horses that would not be for sale except for this. Because, you know, I've got a lot of pride too. I want to be sure we're showing you horses that I exemplify Darien Arabians. What I'm going to do today is, you know, I'm so interested in riding and that's been a great key to what I've bred because I wanted always to breed really capable horses, but they had to be beautiful, they had to be Arabian horses, but they had to be horses that I could train because I like to train. I like to teach horses things. So a horse like this horse has never been to a horse show. He is never going to go to a horse show. What he does is that his job is to take me wherever we go, at whatever speed, at no matter how rough. It's his job for me to tell him where we're going and his job to get me there safely. That's his job. My job, where are we going? His job, get me there safely. In the meantime, through all of this, I like to train. So I never stop teaching horses things. And this horse is just a real pleasant, uh, he, he was kind of a hot little number, but <laughs> he'd been tired. <laughs> tired is a great age. Tired is good health for horses, people, dogs, and everything. Uh, before I get started, just a little bit about the equipment. This is pretty much old time equipment it's traditional. The bridle and the martingale that we have on him was given to me at our 50-year celebration. And it has the names. You can see all of it later. It has the names of the, the, the well-known stallions, and it has the names of the mares, Rontes and Farlata, up here in the top. The bridle is an old-time barrel bridle. The bosal, we always ride with the bosal because you use it to tie with when you're going to tie somewhere. The bit is a Santa Barbara shank. The chains are so that you can water a horse in a creek or a, a uh, water tub or whatever without getting your reins wet. The reins were made by Ernie Morris. They're probably 60 years old. I got them when I was a kid. The saddle is by Doug Cox, wherever he is. Where's Doug Cox? Well, he has his, his uh, unit over here, so if you want some really spectacular Western-made equipment, go see Doug Fox. I have a um, shoe fly that's hooked to my saddle. That keeps the flies off my horse's belly. Uh, I have a saddle blanket that uh, Barbara Schneider had made for me as a gift. I love that. I have my hat, <laughs> made by Prairie Hat in Idaho. I have my chinks, Doug Cox chinks, and I got Junie Fisher. <laughs> She's an old time friend and you're going to love hearing her and she said, well, I'll come right over and sing. She wrote a song for me. We'll get this one. Oh, I like it. Oh. She wrote a song for me. She came all the way over here to just do this as a prayer. Isn't that yeah. Okay, here we go. Horses. Horses can feel a fly. Hard to imagine when people smack a horse. They smack them so hard when you stop and think about the fact that a horse can feel a fly. You've seen him. He'll sit and he'll worry about a fly and he'll worry about a fly and he'll just hate the fact that that fly is biting him, it's driving him crazy. He can feel a fly. So I can use any part of my body and I use all of me in writing. And what I thought would be interesting to do today was instead of doing so much a demonstration, do more an explanation. In other words, this horse feels me, and I feel him. 
from my feet to my legs to my hips to my spine, shoulders, and my head and my hands. He feels it all. And I can do different things, different ways to say the same thing. So if I want to say stop to this horse, I can exhale, I can lift my core, I can put my toes up, I can do all those things and all of that says to him, stop. Or I can just run my hand down the rein. All of it tells him to stop. So if I want him to stop and I just sit down, put my toes up, quit riding, he stops because he understands what I'm telling him. And he stands there until I tell him to go. If I wanted him to back up, I could create a little activity with my feet and he would back up. Now he's going to do that with my body or my hands. Anyway, I ask, he gets it. He relates to these things that he knows. If I want to turn, I can turn my hip, and he's going to turn. If I want to come this way, I can put a little weight in this hip, and he's going to follow it. If you don't quite follow it, I can encourage it with the range. What I want you to know is that there is not one specific thing that tells a horse everything. And if your horse is not doing what you want him to do, it's not him. You get in the fire, you get angry, you get upset, you start banging around, and all you do is cause confusion. So here's something I learned as a kid. When I can't figure out what to do, I get off. Just get off. Because you're not teaching that horse anything when you aren't telling him what to do. So if I want him to, to turn around like that a little faster, I just put a little bit more pressure. All I have to do is just lay my leg on him now, just a little harder. If I want him to stop a little more aggressively, I just am a little bit firmer with my signals so that he knows what I'm going to tell him to do. So if I want to get a little life in his body, I can pick up my reins and he's going to be soft on the bridle and I can begin to speed him up a little bit. But because he's used to me telling him what to do, he will the instant I relax, he relaxes. You can do this but you got to stop chatting when you ride down the trail with people. <laughs> I ride with people every once in a while, and they chit, and they chat, and they have no clue what is happening with their horse. If you want to do this, you've got to be willing to ride alone a certain amount. You've got to go be by yourself. You've got to think. So if you want a horse to stay soft in the bridle, move off your leg, be comfortable, not have to hold him, pay attention to him, be willing to go slow or speed it up and get down the trail with somebody that's going to, and you're going to go really do a job. So, if, by the way, if I want to speed up a horse walking, I use this leg and then this leg. So it's boom, 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 spur, spur. Well, it's not a real spur, but it's just swinging. Swinging, 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 so that he 
gets going down the trails. If I want to stop, I stop. Okay? So let's, um, let's just pick up a little canter here. Of course, he knows how to canter. <laughs> <laughs> And he misread me. He thought I wanted him to go this way. He thought I wanted to stop. So I don't scold him for that. You know, we're, we're partners. I know this horse is going to try as hard as he can for me. So if we make a little mistake, it's okay. I don't, I don't do anything about little mistakes. And he never works in this little room. <laughs> <laughs> so when I want him to go here, I look there, but I don't lean. I keep my body upright. So I'm going to go right around here, and I'm using just a little left leg telling him to go. So now, let me tell you what I've done. I've touched him with the right spur. Touched him with the left, touched him with the right, touched him with the left. To remind him that we were going, I could feel his body easing off to the direction. Uh, I could feel his hips coming in, so I touched him with the fur to make his hips go out. Now I'm going to touch him with whoops, touch him with the spur again. I'm not really touching him with the spur. But I'm just telling them where to go. So it's kind of, it's kind of like I'm just adjusting his body everywhere to go where I want him to go. And now when I want him to stop, I can exhale. Wow. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to do with you folks today is a little bit more of explaining to you that you see these great guys working on, and doing all these wonderful things and it looks so easy. It isn't easy. <laughs> it isn't easy. And you've got to be one of those people that's willing to go sit in your house and try to figure it out. You can ask people a lot, but you probably will confuse yourself to a certain degree. I would suggest that you watch really good people, and you watch whatever it is that they do that you think is worthwhile and interesting, and then you think about it and see if you can't put it together, but you realize that you use all of your body and if you don't have this horse in line and order, he cannot do it. Don't expect him to do it. He cannot do it. He can. A little inside leg here. Now I gotta push him out. There we go. Push him out. Now I gotta be sure he comes around the corner. So I had to do two preparations there. Push him out. Here he's wanting to crowd. And then be sure he goes around the corner. Now I know he's going to crowd right here. He does. So there I'm using my body and my leg. And now I'm going to go make sure he goes around the corner. So now I'm switching legs. My left leg is coming forward. Now my right leg is coming forward. So I'm telling him all the time where I want him to go with my legs and when I'm tired of all this, <laughs> I can't. <don't. laughs> <laughs> okay, have you learned anything? Yeah. Are you going to go home and work at it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Junie, tell them about this song. 